What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Fluent UI, which is Microsoft's design system that is available on a variety of platforms, including, of course, iOS. So here we are on the website from Material Design. We're going to go into iOS. And before we jump into components, let's actually talk about what the heck this is. So similar to material design by Google and other design libraries by various other companies out there, Fluent UI offers components that are cohesive and uh, work well with each other that you can bring into your applications. Now, of course, you can support a variety of platforms like Windows and Android and whatnot. Of course, we're going to focus on iOS today. If we actually go back to the homepage here and scroll down, you'll see some uh, images and uh, iconography in terms of what Fluent UI provides. But today, we're going to actually integrate this and do some examples. So once again, we're going to go back to iOS. If we scroll down here just a smidge, we'll see that there is a link link to get started on GitHub. We're going to open this up and this is basically where the framework lives. We're going to bring this into our project that we create in a moment with uh, Swift Package Manager. And then back on this page, we also have a link for controls. And this is basically a reference of the various components available. So let's go ahead and actually create a project. And we're going to bring this in via SPM. We'll open up Xcode. We're going to go ahead and create a new project. While we go ahead and actually do this, don't forget to smash that like button down below as per usual. Hit subscribe if you're new here. Let's go ahead and call this Fluent Example. I'm going to go ahead and stick with Swift and let's actually go back here. We can uncheck this test uh, checkbox. Let me save this to my desktop. First things first, we're going to expand this and I'll select a 13 Pro to give a run in and we'll see the simulator pop up here momentarily. We're going to bring this uh, package now into our project by clicking on file, add packages. I'll paste in here the URL that we have copied for Fluent UI. You'll see that it resolves it. Let's go ahead and just hit the Add Package button. It will download and resolve it. The first time you do it, it's a little slower. I've actually done it before, which is why it's a little faster, of course. And that just like that, we've brought Fluent UI into our project. So in this view controller, let's go ahead and set a background color of system background, hit run, and let's get started with the various components that we want to uh, do some examples with. The first one we're going to do an example with is a button. So when we tap on the button, something's going to happen, but let's actually bring in the button. So I'm, of course, aware already of the various controls available, but if you were ever curious as to what's available, we can come to this reference that we opened up and under basic inputs, we'll see that there is a button available to us. It shows us the various components, the configuration, styling that's available to you. And the most uh, helpful thing I think on this page is you can actually click on this link under sample code and it shows you right here on GitHub exactly what the configuration looks like. It's called just a button here in this with a style right here. And you can just more or less copy and paste this code. We're going to type it out ourselves, but just an important call out that there are samples available for everything, which is pretty, uh, pretty nice. So I'm going to come here and create a button. So we'll say a button is of type button. We're going to go ahead and create it inside this uh, anonymous closure. Let's not forget to import the framework we just brought into the project, which is Fluent UI. I'll create said button here with a style. Maybe we'll go with the primary outlined style, see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and return this here and of course set a title. So we're gonna tap on this and we're gonna open up a bottom drawer. And we'll talk about what the heck a bottom drawer is momentarily, but let's at least get this showing up on the screen. So let's assign the translates auto resizing masks into constraints to false. Just like that, we've got our button and we can add it to our view hierarchy. 
So one cool thing about these like design systems that are provided by these companies is they're consistently being maintained and evolving, and they're a really good way to get started with really polished uh, components that have things taken care of, like accessibility and so on and so forth, sizing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's uh, always good to consider if you are in the need for some component that is already perhaps uh, built out for you. So we're going to actually add some constraints here, and let me actually redo these. I realized we actually want height and width constraints. So let me do a height there. Let's do a width here of perhaps, I don't know, 200. And we'll also go ahead and just align this in the center of the screen. So we'll say center X anchor is going to be a constraint equal to view dot center X anchor. And I can get away with copy and pasting this and just change this to Y and Y. Go ahead and give it a run and we'll see a button in the center here. So here is one of the various components for the button uh, particular control with the primary outline style. Now let's actually go ahead and tap on this and let's use another component. So we're gonna say button, add target here, self, and we're gonna want a selector, did tap button, and the event here will be similar to what we always use, which is touch up inside. We'll declare this function. And another component that is available via Fluent UI is a heads up display. Now I'm familiar with it, but for those of you who are into who are brand new to this, we can come back here and let's see, we have pickers, items, lists, commands, menus. Maybe we can go to progress. And under progress, you'll see that there is a spinner. So a spinner is more or less what you would expect it to be. It is a spinner, big surprise. And we'll actually see once again, the same links here for sample code, as well as uh, the reference. There are two things available. There's an activity indicator view, as well as a heads up display, otherwise known as HUD. So we're gonna use the HUD when we tap on it. We're gonna say HUD, our HUD.shared, and we're gonna want to go ahead and actually show it. So. We have a show here, we have a hide, and we have uh, various other things. So we can say show failure, we can say show from a particular view, so on and so forth. So here I'm gonna say show from view, and this view is the current view controller's view. So let's go ahead and tap this, and we'll notice our spinner pops up. Now, there are actually a variety of ways to configure this. I encourage you to go through the reference. Let's do one more example related to that drawer that I briefly mentioned, and then we'll wrap things up. So right now we're showing this heads up display. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And one really cool and common component that's used in a lot of applications is a drawer. So we're gonna create a drawer and a component that's available to us is a drawer controller, super creatively named on Microsoft's part. So here we're gonna go ahead and pass in these uh, arguments in the constructor. So source view is our source view. It's rect will be view.bounds. It's presentation origin will be view.frame.size.height. So basically the bottom of our screen. The direction we're gonna present is up. And let's see, let's make the maximum height this can go to uh, be 500. And then we can go ahead down here and say present drawer VC animated true. So let's go ahead and run it and let's see what actually happens when I tap it. So it looks like the screen has actually dimmed out and we have a drawer at the bottom, but this isn't quite nice since our drawer is empty. So it's intrinsic size is small. What we need to actually do to get it to show up like a human readable sane drawer is supply a content controller. So the content controller here, we're gonna create it down below. I'll just call it content VC and it's not gonna be anything too fancy, just creating it for the sake of having something in here to fill our drawer inside of view did load. We are just going to actually add a label and just pin it with some constraints. So we'll add a label here. We'll say add sub view label. Let's do some basic configuration like the text alignments. Maybe we'll give it a font of system, font of size, I don't know, 32 and bold. Let's actually add some text on here. We'll do iOS Academy is great with an exclamation mark because we really mean it. And finally, let's actually add some constraints to this guy. 
So what are these constraints going to be? Uh, let's see, we'll do label, leading anchor constraint, and this constraint is going to be the second that I stop making typos. Let's try that one last time. We want a constraint equal to view.leadingAnchor. Let's see if I can get away with copy and pasting this a total of three more times. We'll do trailing anchor here. We'll want trailing here. We'll want to do top anchor, top anchor, and bottom anchor, and bottom anchor here as well. Last thing before we give it a run, let's give it a height as well. So it's a little larger to give our drawer some space. We'll give it a constraint equal to a particular constant. So we want the first one here. I will stick with 300 and give this guy a run. So now when I go ahead and actually tap this, we should see our drawer. Now we're not actually seeing it, so something's not quite right. And let's see what that is. We forgot to assign the translates uh, translates, try that one more time. We want to assign translates auto resizing masks into constraints to false. Give that a run once more. Boom, I tap it. There is our obnoxiously large label in our drawer. So the component here that we're using from Fluent is the drawer, which is kind of a painful component to write from scratch every single time, especially if you want to customize it. Let's say you have a drawer where there is scrollable content inside of it. If you actually click into this drawer, you'll see that there is a bunch of things you can actually configure. Let's try that one more time. We'll say jump to definition. And you'll see there's a bunch of things in here that you can configure. Things are nicely documented for your uh, ease of use. And I would also be willing to bet if I come back here and find that drawer, I think it's under, let's see what is actually under, perhaps utility, nope, not utility, surfaces, drawer. If we click it, you'll see a bunch of examples in here of things you can place in a drawer. In this case, it looks like they've got a table view in a drawer, that list right there. Uh, and just like that, that's basically Fluent UI in a nutshell. There's a bunch of really great components that you can bring in. It's one of the design frameworks that has fewer components, thinking of material design that I'm comparing it to, but the components in here are pretty nice. Um, I particularly have used a drawer before. The date time pickers are pretty cool as well. I like the usage of button in here and the configuration that it gives out of the box. And the other thing that I really like is under uh, notification and engagements, the tool tips, which are kind of a pain to build out by hand, as well as the message bar, uh, otherwise referred to as like a bottom toast or banner. So these are pretty helpful components to bring in that are nicely polished, very configurable and flexible. So that's Fluent UI in a nutshell. If you haven't used it before, give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you have used it before. That'd be pretty interesting to know. If you haven't dropped a like already, don't forget to do so. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment what you guys are looking forward to see. If you've used Fluent UI, hit subscribe. You guys know the drill. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.